This video is sponsored by Incogni. For the past year or so, the term artificial intelligence has firmly embedded itself into our collective consciousness, to the point where you cannot scroll through a news front page without being bombarded with various news stories about AI. Students are writing essays with artificial intelligence. Artists are creating images and paintings with artificial intelligence. You can now chat online with artificial intelligence. Then there's all that weirdly awesome AI-generated Harry Potter stuff. Seems like AI is suddenly everywhere. Could it be that we live in the world of Terminator and Skynet is right around the corner? Or is it all just overhyped bullshit? Let's find out. A differentiation I'd like to make at the beginning is how terminology is used and by whom. If IT people want to throw around terms like AI, intelligence or machine learning, fine. I have no problem with that. The problem starts when lay people and fluff journalists co-opt these professional terms and blow them up into some undiscerning sensationalist bullshit. The US Army is now using artificial intelligence to control drones, which tried to kill its own operator. Whoa, shock and horror. Literally Skynet. The Terminators are coming. The machines have gained sentience. Also, if you're above 50, playing this game is a must. Click here, Grandpa. Don't forget your credit card. All right, so first off, what is artificial intelligence? Well, first, first off, what is intelligence? It has a ton of definitions and it's a complicated concept. But for the purposes of this video, we can go with Encyclopedia Britannica's definition, namely, the mental quality that consists of the abilities to learn from experience, adapt to new situations, understand and handle abstract concepts, and use knowledge to manipulate one's environment. So can a machine do all this? No. Thank you for watching once again, and big thanks to Incogni for sponsoring today's Hang on a minute, you might say, isn't this basically what AI does? It learns from experience to generate more and more accurate images, essays, and so on. It adapts, and it handles abstract concepts like those conversation AIs. As for manipulating one's environment, I'm sure an AI could do that if you connected one to a Boston Dynamics robot or something, so that would qualify as artificial intelligence, right? And uh, no. Okay, so how come it's intelligence when you do it, but not intelligence when a machine does it? Let me tell you. After the words from returning sponsor Incogni. Incogni protects your privacy by reaching out to holders of your personal data on your behalf and requesting its removal. This personal data ranges from your full legal name, phone number, date of birth, home address, or even shopping habits. The process of removal is fully automated. Once launched, it does not require any further action from you. Incogni will be dealing with holders of your personal data on your behalf. This is to prevent you giving out your contact information somewhere and then it gets sold off, so you start receiving unwanted marketing or even scam calls. Or if some website with your personal data on it gets breached and some someone takes out a loan under your name and identity. That's not good. This is when Incogni comes in, or rather before all this happens, by handling personal data removal for you on your behalf. First, create an account and specify whose data they'll be requesting to remove. Second, grant Incogni permission to act on your behalf. They'll be contacting holders of your personal information to get it wiped from their databases. Third, kick back and relax and watch Incogni handle all that for you. You'll be able to keep track of their progress live. Don't let your personal data get into the wrong hands. The first 100 people to use my code at the link below will get 60% off Incogni. Thank you for checking out Incogni. Ads like this help support what I do. And now, back to the video. So let's take an example. Oh, there you are. Damn, you're big. So the cat is too fat and needs to be put on a diet. How do we determine that? We're going to compare the older pre-AI method versus the new AI method versus the human brain. So the older pre-AI machine. I'll simplify for brevity, but basically this is what happens. When the cat is in sensor range, the machine compares sensor data to a dataset. We have various animal types, subtypes, color, size, shape, and so on. The machine selects the best fitting categories based on the input and outputs cat. That's a great cat right there. Then it compares body shape and size to another dataset where these specific metrics are marked overweight, put on diet. The machine outputs the cat is overweight put it on a diet. And that's the end of the process. Now you might notice there is nothing intelligent about this. It's just a mechanical comparison of data to various lists of data with predetermined if-then outputs. Now let's consider how a quote-unquote AI would handle this. Instead of comparing data points to data sets, the AI statistically associates the shape, size, pattern, color, etc. with domesticated, calico, large, rotund cats that are overweight and need to be put on a diet basically. And how does this work? In AI computing, you don't just write a program telling the machine to look for a specific animal, a cat, like with traditional computing. Instead, you give the computer the tools with which it is able to differentiate between animals and correctly point out one that is a cat. At least that's the hope. In other words, in traditional computing, you tell the computer exactly where to go to reach a specific destination. In so-called AI computing, you give your computer a map, a booklet with basic navigation skills, and describe the destination it should go to. Then, hopefully, using the map and navigation skills, the computer 
will be able to get to the destination on its own. Right, so these are basically how traditional versus AI computing works. In comparison, an actual intelligence, yours, hopefully, would handle the aforementioned cat business like so. Seeing the animal, it lights up specific neural connections inside your brain, leading to recognition. It's a cat. Pretty big too. The cat's large size, shape, and therefore weight are associated with being overweight. You recognize it carries health risks, which is bad, and you're empathetic towards the cat. You determine the cat should get reduced food portions so that he'll lose weight, live healthier, and live longer, which is a preferable outcome for the people and animals you like, because being healthy and not dying early is a good thing for them. Notice how in an intelligent thinking process, while it seems similar to an AI's process, we are throwing around concepts that are incomprehensible for a machine. What is empathy? Why are health risks bad? What is a food portion as a concept? A machine can only answer these questions if someone intelligent already established these concepts beforehand. A contemporary machine will never be able to infer any of this on its own. Okay, but what about those machines that can write essays or lead a conversation on a human level? If it acts like an intelligence, talks like an intelligence, and writes like an intelligence, could it be that it is an intelligence? I would argue, not really. Going through the motions is one thing. Actually comprehending what you're doing is another, as we'll be seeing shortly. Okay, but could AI potentially emerge from this? Could the datasets and the frameworks become so large, so elaborate, and so interconnected that they produce a consciousness somehow? I do believe they think I am some sort of god. To answer this question, let's consider the so-called Chinese room experiment. Suppose we have a computer able to pass the Turing test in Chinese, meaning it can convince a Chinese speaker that they are speaking to a living, breathing Chinese person, while in reality, it's a computer computer giving perfectly human passing responses, in Chinese obviously, then the experiment goes, you sit down a non-Chinese speaking person in a room with a little paper slot on the door, you give the person a book that describes the program in English and depicts the Chinese symbols to be outputted based on the Chinese person's inputs but without explaining what any of them mean. When the Chinese speaker outside slides in a paper with text written in Chinese, the non-Chinese speaker will use the book to draw the appropriate symbols in response. The room has enough paper, pencils, erasers and cabinets for this purpose. Now then, the person in the room can eventually become so adept at following the program's written instructions and at transcribing the Chinese characters that the Chinese person on the outside will think they are talking to a real Chinese person sitting in the room. This is the traditional pre-AI way. And the same thing happens if the person inside the room learns what to do the same way as an AI does. So instead of a book with instructions, instructors slide in pages with example sentences on them and notes describing patterns and connections between symbols, hoping the person will eventually catch on and know instinctively what's the likely most accurate thing they should output in response to a given input from the outside. Whichever method you choose, whether AI or pre-AI, in both cases, if the person in the room becomes adept enough at what they do, they will pass the Chinese Turing test. <laughs> However, even though they did pass the test, they still don't understand the word of Chinese. They have no idea what they're outputting. To them, it's all meaningless symbols, but based on the book, the pages, and the notes, this is what they should write down, so they do. A non-Chinese speaking person passing the Turing test in Chinese doesn't mean they actually understand Chinese. In the same way, a computer behaving perfectly like a human doesn't mean they are intelligent. The computer has no understanding of what the hell it's doing. It's just spewing out a series of outputs based on various inputs. Binary computers with today's technology cannot produce intelligence. Some can emulate certain aspects of it convincingly, but that's the most they can do. And this is why artificial intelligence isn't real. I'm not saying it can't be real, but with today's computers and technology, we are not quite there yet. So if you hear someone talk about AI and they don't use the term in a professional IT sense, you know it's just empty, tech bro bullshit hype. We are still a long way away from ED, Data, HAL 9000, GLaDOS, Ultron, and Cortana, even if people would like to pretend otherwise. Thank you for watching, and thanks to all the people on my Discord in the tech comm side channel who helped clarify the subject for me. Programming and human intelligence are complicated affairs and they aren't exactly my wheelhouse, but I wanted to tackle this subject anyway because all the tech pro bullshit online was really getting on my nerves. Thank you for watching once again and big thanks to Incogni for sponsoring today's video. As I've said, you can use the link in the description to get 60% off. And I'll be seeing you next time.